gonna make sense. What joke's not gonna make sense? I was gonna say, oh, we should just call this uh, whatever the fucking name of this game is, and then Carlson Nick solved the Israel Palestine conflict. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Scheming Through the Zombie Apocalypse. I'm going to redo a little bit of the intro. Um, so, Spencer basically said, hey, you know that highly successful Super Mario Party series we're going through and all having fun doing? Yeah, i got to stop it because I have a proctology exam. Uh, that's the gist of what the ex- explanation was at first. We, we may have said it differently, but I'm now kind of you know, speeding up for you guys. So we're going to go with English, and we're definitely having voice acting. You, can, you, can, you should be able to hear this. It's very important that you do. Um, but yeah, so this is another trophy game. Carlos and I played through a football game, but the recording was lost and we played through, um, a little, or one or two or three playthroughs of a uh, one night stand. So now it's time for scheming through the zombie, zombie apocalypse, the beginning. So I want, what do you think this game is about right now without having played it? Some stupid like zombie land ass thing. Also, with anthropomorphized fucking people, animal things. Is this a sequel to Sonic? <laughs> no. Um, so, I played through a little bit just to get one trophy to keep my trophy streak going once, and then I quickly realized, nope, gotta come back with Carlos. Um, so, that should tell you what kind of game this is Why be. is that a thing for you? What, a trophy streak? Yeah. So, I, I will explain this, because this is the Let's Platinum, technically. Um, I have no challengers in my trophy hunting. There is no one on my level. Uh, there used to be some people and I surpassed them and now nobody's on my level. So instead of challenging other people, I challenge myself to get the highest trophy streak I can. So that that's at least one trophy a day. I'm actually like, I think 215 days now. Mm -hmm. Um, and whenever the streak ends, I'll start a new streak and try to beat my own score. Like however many trophies in a certain amount of time, because again, I have no equals. I am the greatest. So that's the problem of being at the top. All right. So yeah, like I said, I have one trophy, but there's 16 more. Hank? Hank? Can you hear it? Oh, this is voice acting. I did not know that. It's we don't madness. have to do our voice acting today? No. madness out there. What the hell are you talking about? The end I mean, this is about the same level. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Hey, can you grab a beer from the fridge? You really don't know yet? Know what? Are you kidding me? You didn't notice all the gunshots and screaming? Right, Do you want to settle down, Carlos? Oh, I think she was playing with the dog and she threw the ball at the door. Oh, whoa, whoa, language. It's complete and out of chaos here. Animals are going mad, biting each other. Will anyone tell us what's going on? Okay, so here's the first choice. I want to pick, is this for real? I wish we could pick choices, but we can't. Is this for real? Yes! A fucking zombie apocalypse, dude! Wow. What are we gonna do, Hank? Well, we're not going out there, that's for sure. You brought some coke, right? Oh, man. Why are you <laughs> no reaction to that? <laughs> but, yeah, I brought some wine. All right. Oh, whoa! <laughs> I, I was like, oh! <laughs> I was a bit too slow on that. Scrap that plan. Let's do some productive. I have an idea. Okay. Oh, sorry. Do you have a Slack message right now? Oh no, it's Juliana's computer that she never turns off. So she has a Slack message. Yeah. Uh so what? I just shouldn't we stock up on supplies? Relax, I'm prepared for this situation. I got a year's worth of food and drink up in this place. Now, pick one of these. <laughs> so we have Shaun of the Dead, Shaun, the Living Shaun Dead, the Dead, and Austin Powers. Well, we have to pick Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. What the fuck is this game? Don't worry, this happens sometimes. I'm sure they'll fix it in no time. Who is so, while this is going, oh, yeah. um... I actually just watched a Key and Peele skit where there's a zombie outbreak, but all the zombies are racist and none of them bite black people. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> and uh, it made me think, do you think if there was a disease that turned all white people into zombies that any other races would try and cure it or just kind of let it rock? Uh, no, this is the pure number of white people. Honestly, I was thinking about... Um... 
Days Gone and also like Last of Us and all these other games of how they like, okay, zombie, first zombie shows up, society collapses in 10 days. But I was also thinking about like COVID. Instead, it would be like, no, instead, Jeff, like some rich guy would just create a compound and he would just like work people to death and be like, yeah, it's either you work or I send you out with the zombies. So Walking Dead touched on that a little bit with like some people had like houses that were like closed off. Just from like the little bit I played of the Telltale game, which also I was thinking about recently, uh, that 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 game like the dialogue and stuff was like aimed at I feel like kids, but the, obviously it was very like violent and stuff like that. Like it's super like for a zombie apocalypse, it's super PG, which is weird. Except when it's not with violence. Um. But yeah, I was I was thinking about it, and it was like they never really have like a rich person who managed to survive the zombie apocalypse just by like you know promising people safety if they just work themselves to fucking death, like keeping electricity going or some shit, like some black mirror shit. In Days Gone, they kind of touch on it lightly of you working for a former prison warden who became just like she creates a work camp and it's like you eat if you work. And we will keep you away from the zombies. And I was like, okay, this kind of makes sense. But w I'm more of like, it would be more interesting if instead of them just jumping immediately to all of society has collapsed, more staying on the precipice of like things are collapsing around us. But oh, I see what you mean. A, like a bunch of people at, trying, like, trying to keep the wheel going of like, no, society's, this is working. Because like... I don't know, with COVID, and I hate to compare a pandemic to a fictional pandemic, but... Yeah, that's crazy. There's no overlap there. Like <laughs> Yeah, but it was, but there was mostly of just, like, for a couple of weeks in the office, health and... health. Uh, most health officials were like, shut down your office, and a bunch of people were like... Like, GameStop was like, oh, we're an emergency business, and everyone was just like, of course you're not! You just sell video game stuff, but they were like, well, we have to keep this thing open. You remember when GameStop finally closed, right? Do you, do you remember it was, Do you remember um what release it was? Was it Mortal Kombat? It was what, Mortal Kombat was 2 years ago. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, I sorry, I thought that was oh. What? <laughs> Nick, I've aged 20 years yeah. since last year as you said. Um so it was the Doom and Animal Crossing release. Um which was in like the end of March. Uh, there we go. I think, um, actually, I think yes. they tried to prolong it until Final Fantasy VII released. But, like, as much as you say, like, how are you guys still open? Like, you're obviously not an essential business. Who the fuck were the people going to GameStop in the pandemic? I mean, Th that's more insane to me. We never hold customers accountable, and we absolutely need to, because that's bananas. That you're like, hey, I know I can buy this game digitally, but. I kind of need, I what really need this it? copy. But like, like I, 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 I'm with you on like, you know, okay, okay. the customer is always wrong. The one, the one thing. Real, that, real quick, I do want to point out, we had to lockpick that despite it being broken open because he was like, oh, you want me to step through and get, you know, all cut up by all the glass? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a good point. Uh, what were you saying? But, uh, like I can, I can understand at the beginning of the pandemic you were like, oh, you know, I just need this one wire or whatnot, just, just <laughs> to like. Shut. That was so deep into the pandemic. But but I meant like this. I, I can see a little bit, but also it's like, Wait, the, one, the customers should fucking know better. But there's a lot of crazy people as we've seen this last year who are just like, yes, the world is ending, but I'm gonna continue to operate. I think it was just maybe, so many ignorant people where they were like. Just like, oh, I have, I've sat at home for a month and I'm bored. Better go get a I video mean, yeah. game. Like, what? I mean, hey, people were texting me of like, oh, Carlos, how do I get into video games? And I'm like, well, this is kind of the best time to do it. But like, it's just to go back to topic. I just think it would overall be interesting. Because I was thinking of like the horde mode of the of Days Gone. I'm like, it it really sucks that I can't sick this horde on, on like, a group oh of, like... God. 
it gives you a couple chances to do that of like if you can keep this army of uh zombies coming like and you get them to go to a like a rebel camp they'll wipe out the entire camp and you can just go after and grab all the stuff that you need but i was just like it'd be really interesting to be like one of the people like if the game was set up like you were cast out or kicked out you and like the rest of the poor people and you guys decide you know what we're gonna band together and we're gonna break down this wall and we're just gonna you know eat the rich literally with the zombie flesh eating people but again like that was a really well timed fuck off <laughs> i think too i think too many games are so interested in more of like let's collapse tell, everything yeah, and they're also just like hey we really want to tell this story that we just thought of where we have this zombie type enemy but we don't call them zombie we call them uh infected or uh clickers freakers or freakers <laughs> and it's just like we guys we crack the code here the people are the real monsters not the zombies and people are just but, like whoa how many game of the years can we give it like <laughs> the thing that really annoys me even more though about the whole people are the real monsters thing is like it's never it's always in this abstract of like oh yeah these people are real assholes but it'd be really interesting also you always play as a straight white guy so there's never any like <laughs> hey other than ellie, a- ellie. is a white <laughs> lesbian okay, okay okay all right 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 I'll pump the brakes a little bit on that one, but also the we like in The Last of Us Two, it only comes up like once that she has to deal with homophobia. But I'm like, imagine if you play as a black guy in the post-apocalypse, and then you run into a b- bunch of racist white people, and you're just like, yo, the world is literally falling apart, and you're still going out of your way just to well, fuck that's the me thing over. is like, if you're a racist, you're absolutely still gonna be a racist in the zombie apocalypse, and they do not explore that enough. Like you don't you don't just suddenly be like, we gotta band together. Like, you would absolutely carry those backwards ass beliefs. Because, cause like, if you're not shocked by the modern world into not being a racist, you're still going to be a racist in the zombie apocalypse because you're going to be like, uh, you know, I'm going to cling to what I know. <laughs> I mean, Again, I think it would just be a lot more interesting because Fallout New Vegas kind of does that, but I'll, I haven't played the whole thing. But it's just more of like, why not, instead of throwing out every single ideology to make the, make your bull, bullshit zombie, and of course there's the cult, there's the people who eat other people, and you're like, ooh, look at these kids. It is funny that they always go back to the same thing. It's like, oh my god, they're eating people. I'm like, yeah, you should have expected that. There's a food At this shortage. Point, it, it's, like, every, it's in every genre. Instead, it would be a lot more interesting to find to find the people who have hoarded all the food. And you're just like, hey, we were living like down the street and you could have helped us and you have all the guns and you have all the food. Why not like let us live in your compound? And they're just like, no, we just don't like you because you're black. And then I was just like, okay, that's the game now. Now you have to now you get to either figure out if you want to like murder all these people or try to find some other way of working together. Well, I also feel like this is just a personal thing. With zombies, it's never, I've never quite understood how they maintain the pack mentality. Like, how they don't just turn on each other, and how they don't just like, and also if they're like real zombies, not like infected or parasites mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck, how they aren't just like actually falling apart. Um. That, that bit, I kind of just hand wave, like, you're right. But, well, I, I do, because just... you have to. To get into the genre, like you, ha- you can't just like. Um, I'm always just more interested in like. Okay, this thing happens, and then all of a sudden we like it's the G- it's. I want to spend more time on like dealing with the immediate outbreak, of like, trying to keep it going. No, no, no. It so be- I, I, I'm with you, like, because I think it would actually be much because we all like have assumed that. The fall of society would be in like 10 days or like, you know, a month. I do think it would take a long time. And I think it would eventually build up to points where you have like different strongholds. You have cities like that were like walled off. Uh, mm-hmm. like, and then you just comes to a thing where like either it comes from within or something just breaks outside and it just fucking all goes like completely wrong. And that's the part I want to see. Like just slowly like build up to that. Okay, hold on. Who walks like that? Um, or just like watching people deny the shit right in front of them and just be like, 
That was an actor. Like, no, what do you mean he ate another person? Like, Or it would be even, like, another fun thing would be to be, like, the, the first responder thing and knowing that, like, oh, if I tell everyone the truth about, oh, I saw someone eat someone. Like, doing, like, a mass effect thing of, like, should I just lie to these people to try to keep calm so that way I can, like, better strategize to keep them in control? Or should I tell them the truth and that might create panic? Like, I think there's a bunch of ways that you could do it that are a lot more interesting than just like here's another open world actually you know what i thought about and i j- kind of just realized um the uh dead rising handles that or at least the first two uh, i mean dead rising 2 th- it does it from within where it's just yeah. like um where okay so you know you got caught in an outbreak and here you are but like if you just um if you had just, uh, it's more about trying to survive in that as opposed to like watching it from the outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, the more I think about like the the two times we played Dead Rising Two, I'm like, that game was a lot smarter than I gave it credit for in my initial playthrough. But also like, the it's more I think it's about both. It, it's very dumb and it's very smart at the same time. Like there are parts of it that I think are very well done and very clever, and then there's some real campy parts like. I think what's more annoying to me, though, is just, like, I'm like, that game has so many, or Dead Rising 2 specifically, the game that I played, so many interesting things about that universe, but people continually just, like, want to jump over the interesting stuff that shit brings up. Like, the whole pharmaceutical company figures out how to give a vaccine, but, like, we're going to engineer breakout outbreaks just to drive up prices it's so ingenious. Like I know Resident doesn't Resident Evil kind of do that shit with the Umbrella Corporation or something. A little shit? bit. But also with um you know, it's yeah, it, it's it's just realistic and you didn't realize it was a re- realistic till it happened. Um okay, he said he wanted half. How do I make sure I get half? I don't want to do math here. But also, like, I'm sick of these uh, post-apocalyptic open worlds where I'm like, you got to kill these bandits. Instead, it would be more... Yeah, it would be that more, shit gets sold. Like, like it was kind of cool playing Death Stranding with the whole thing of, like, you just got to deliver this shit. Because I'm like, this is actually a lot more... Like, in an actual post-apocalyptic world, if we got to keep the wheels rolling, I'm like, I would hope more people decided, you know what, let me embark on dangerous trips to help others and deliver like valuable materials instead of let me grab a gun and just murder anyone who looks at me funny. So that way I can make sure my base needs are taken. Cause it's just, I don't know. It reflects poorly on the person who came up with the story of like, Oh, you should murder people as soon as you're not being held accountable for it. I also just find like most of the, uh, most, most, most of like the uh well, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to pay attention to the game as well sorry yeah uh, but it's uh most of the plots of like someone like betraying you or um or of just like someone being like evil for the sake of evil are just like so poorly written um and stuff like like the the it feels like the same level of betrayal as like in an RPG where you meet a character who who's just like this world is too tainted if only someone could cure this blight and you're fighting like level 3 fucking goblins with them and you're like okay well here's the main villain of the game like it's like that level of like telegraphed another thing that's annoying to me is and also this is Something that Days Gone I thought was really cool, but they didn't do it well enough, was, like, they had a character who's, a, like, an antagonist, who you knew before this whole shit went down that just, like, didn't like you, and then once the whole thing, like, society collapsed, was like, oh, I can get away with this. I've always hated you, and I'm like, that is a lot more interesting to me to create, like, oh, yeah, imagine if... There's a guy that you really can't stand, and now society has collapsed to a point where if you were, if you needed to do something, you could get away with it, and exploring that more of like, you would still like have human relationships. You would still have like, oh, this is my neighborhood. Let's try to protect this. But it would be. I've actually always I've thought about that a lot. Um, like if I was gonna make a zombie game, like 
let yourself like follow a dead rising style where you rescue people but have them like each do something like contributing even if it's just something like because when you rescue people just like oh you rescued like 20 people congrats eh." but it's like they don't like very only like i think like a a 10 percent of people actually do something specific if you like recruit Mm -hmm. them but um i don't understand why they don't explore that more or like maybe you start from like a house and then you build out to like two houses three like build a perimeter out like i don't understand why that's not like done more but like you build a community from the ground up state of decay kind of get touched into that but it's just like feels so like manufactured Didn't Fallout four have something like that where you like build a kind little compound of. actually yeah it'd be like fallout four but with zombies and because fallout four it would just like it would, you know like randomly it would get attacked or whatever Mm-hmm. I mean, that's at least a bit more interesting. I'm just so dull of like, okay, you create a zombie game, but the most more interesting enemies actually are the other humans. But even the other humans are really just standard fare third person shooter enemies. Like, we, we can do a little better, y'all. We. It's all his fault. Please don't kill me. Yeah. <sighs> I didn't anticipate us just kind of like ignoring the game. <laughs> I mean, it's fine, but I mean, who knows? This might this might be a lot more interesting for the viewers. Maybe. Um. They've been standing outside for a long time and haven't been attacked by zombies, which I don't think yeah. is very likely. If you're going to tell me we're in a zombie world, then you've got to like have the whole numbers advantage and have them just be everywhere. Out of your mind, idiot. You're going to get me killed. What are they talking about? How should I know? Okay, the percentage you propose is fine. Just hand it over. Really? Yes. Hurry up. Uh... Okay, here you go. Here you go. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna do 50% of my loot. Alright. Make me do math. Also, another in- interesting thing, like, Dead Rising does is, like, the whole... You're not trying to take out all the zombies in that area. You're just trying to, like, get out of it. Because you know that, like, the government will just drop a firebomb and like end all of this i think that's also a yeah lot more it's it's very much um you know if you choose to save people you can but you don't you're not, you're not required to you're just trying to get through and then you know there'll be downtime between missions where you're like all right might as well go save some people okay will do i don't understand what just happened there where are you hank hold on here. Whoa. <laughs> Boy, did he smack you good. Yes, I know. These couches look really weird when you look at how big they are. Yeah. You'll do better tomorrow. Fuck no. It was hardly even worth Also, like a head sized ashtray. I should have been better at negotiating with those bulls. I'm a professional world class salesman for cabbage sake. You were a professional salesman twenty years ago. Yeah, I still am. Oh, like hell you are. I gotta be honest, of the three games that we've played, I think this is the worst one so far. Yeah, it's the... <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, it's the one that's so, kept our least interest. It's so dialogue heavy. This is what made me a millionaire, Larry. Are you gonna go back to selling light? And also, I was thinking about, I'm thinking about right now of like, okay, their base of this operations is an apartment building. And I'm like, how do you even like, defend that? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. No. Yeah. Also, this production, this producing studio is just producing everything. They pub- yeah. They'll basically, like, oh. they'll basically take whatever you want and like, okay, we're gonna make a game. They they find they crack the code, which fucking more power to them. Uh, Get the fuck out of where me. they realized they could sell these games hey. if they gave them easy trophy lists or easy uh, achievement lists because they're also on uh, Xbox. That people would just buy them just for that. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, I mean, you know, like, I your mother was so more power to you. Hank, will you stop it? Anyway, fine. Let's see what we got here. 
food, medicine, appliances. Check this out. You found something? Yeah, this stove fits the bill. Uh. Sticking the doors by stealing my stove? We're teaching you racist bastards a lesson today. We're taking everything you have. Bro, will you come help me with this? Sure. Why didn't he lock the door? Hey, check this out, Larry. I don't know. I would like deadbolt everything, life. especially in a pandemic. So. Yeah. So we've never we try to play it, but I honestly think that the UI is horrendous and like whatever like potential the game has, it's actually just not very good. Um, the uh, oh my god. Oh, good one. Um, but um, it's a uh, what's what's the game? Not Days Gone. Um. Uh, seven days to die. Um, so a really interesting game mechanic about that is that mm -hmm. you can never build a permanent shelter because zombies can just like dig through anything. So even if you just like build something on like a really tall hill, they would literally either dig up from underneath or just like dig through the foundation until it just collapses. Which I feel like, so every time I see an apartment building in like a zombie thing, I'm like, that wouldn't hold up. They destroy the foundation. I mean, my thing is like, oh, like at the beginning of The Last of Us 1 of dealing with like that like government body or whatnot that's like trying to kill Joel at the beginning. I'm like, that's a, actually a lot more interesting to be like, if you lived in, in the apartment, like in the apartment neighborhood and they're just like, yeah, y'all got to get out or because we're, we're just going to burn this thing down and like cleanse it. And you'd be like, ah, but... I gotta get out of here, and I don't have enough time. That would be a lot more fun. Or, I don't know. There, I just think we, as a whole, maybe we've done all the zombies we need. So, I think the big thing with zombies, and again, going more credit to Dead Rising, you can kind of do this a little bit. I feel like with zombie stuff, like there should be higher stakes. So, like if you fail certain missions, like you don't do something in time, or you do it wrong, or trust the wrong people... It should straight up just, like, give you a game over and you have to start a new game. Because, like, slogging through those games and realizing that, really, no matter what you do, you're going to make it to the end, I feel it kind of cuts from the, like, tension that the game's trying to get across. But I know that's not as popular. I think what you did say, though, of, like... Like, it'd be cool to do, like, a Mass Effect type thing where you're, like... Or the Dead Rising thing. You, you save a bunch of people... But, like, you have to maintain their moods, and then every once in a while you have, like, if you're going to do, like, oh, there's other bandits, we have to worry about those people of, like, defectors, and then pe those people, like, stealing your food and running away, and now you're like, oh, well, fuck, or the guy who fell asleep on security watch, and now there's, like, zombies in the fucking camp. That would be a lot more fun of being able to, like, oh, we'll save people, and depending on their stats, put them where they need to be. Maybe do more of, like, a roll-time strategy type thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I feel like those games exist, but not in, like, a palatable form in, for, like, general gamers. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, uh, I, th I think in Dead Rising, there's only, like, two... Um, that is reassuring. Uh, there's only two people who will cause mutinies, two or three, in the original Dead Rising, at least. Um, so like, you can either just choose not to get them, or if you do, it's just like know how to come. Like, there's one dude who just wants food, so if you go in there and just pick him, like, bring him like a bag of chips, he'll be like, all right, mutiny averted. Like, it's just. Um, but there's uh, it's an interesting concept, and I feel like. I agree with you. It should be like a, you know, say you have different personnel and it's like, um, if you don't put someone well on security enough, then you can like lose everything or something like that. I mean, um, Metal Gear Solid 5 kind of played with that a little bit. Yeah, pretty much something like that would be really cool. Being like, okay, I'm recruiter dude and I just go and find people. And I bring them back. Maybe, and then they serve different functions when they get back, or they can help you unlock different shit. Yeah, didn't Dead Island try to do that too a little bit? Um, 
Uh, I honestly re only remember like five minutes of Dead Island, and it was <laughs> the terrible melee and like that rap song. Uh, who do your voodoo bitch? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Iconic. And like, there was actually like Days Gone does a cool thing where like with the different camps, if you do jobs like the side missions for that camp, you'll build up trust and you'll get access to better weapons. I'm like, this is really cool. Well, that's such a but basic was... thing. Like, I feel like that's so standard for those kind of games now. Yeah, but I was more of like, if you just take, took it to the next step, you could have, re like, the thing with Days Gone, I always felt like, if you just took one extra step, you're on the precipice of greatness, but you just sort of like, nah, 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 let's, let's, let's hold back, because we have this horde in the third act, and I'm like, you, oh yeah, I don't think you're ever going to play it, but spoilers, you don't get to fight a horde in that game until the final third of the game. I think I remember that. I mean, especially since it was like, that was one of the things that upset people at launch because it was so integrated in the advertising um, that people were upset that it was so like uh, backlogged. I mean, so they'll, there's a couple of variations of the horde. So there'll be like, like if you're driving your motorcycle at night, which is a really cool thing is like you could run into like 20 of them and be like oh fuck i and like you hit a tree and then you get flung off your bike and now you're like i'm surrounded and now i have to fight my way out and that's great but fighting the horde is like there's it's like that e3 demo of like yeah. oh shit there's so many of them and it's like it's really fun and it's really cool but why is this all the way in the third act if it was in all the ads i don't want to wait <laughs> till the <laughs> no i agree with you um I don't think of that so it's like putting the sex the sex scenes in mass effect at the final like the final mission like be, to be fair or... they are at the final mission do you not remember mass effect i mean yeah the, but... the sex scenes are literally like right before the final missions in all three of those games yeah but the the other fun part about mass effect though is like For real? it's the building of the relationship you know that like you're building towards it with the horde thing it's just like you, like the first ten hours of that game, I'm like, okay, when am I? When is this horror thing gonna happen? When is, when is like, and then I'm like, oh, oh, maybe this. There's only one horde fight, and that's that's what they showed off. And then I was like, did is there a glitch in this game, and that there's just no hordes? And then I finally got to, it and I was like, oh, okay. It's it's okay, really. I'm sure you didn't mean anything by it. Yeah, of course I didn't. I just don't. I think well, I may have fucked us by leaving the voice acting on because I think we'd be a lot more engaged with this game if we had to voice them ourselves. I mean, it's whatever. This might be... This one's for the subscribers to, to chat in the comments about what they think of Zombie Apocalypse game. <laughs> well, so then let me, let me add another thing to that. I don't... Like, if someone announced the zombie game today... Today. Do you think you would be excited for it? I took the advice of Honestly? Okay. Who? If you say yes, you are exactly the kind of gamer I thought you were. I'm going to I'm going to say no cuz I think just some cuz excitement like, like there different. are people holding out for fucking okay. Dying Light 2. And I'm okay, like, yeah, how are you still wanting to play a zombie game at this point? We've had 400 of them. Like No, they they don't want a zombie game. They want an open world Mirror's Edge game. I'm not I'm not allowing them to to lie to themselves that they want another zombie game. You don't want another zombie <laughs> game. And most people don't want it, again, I'm a casual gamer. You know. Increasingly so. What, what I want, and maybe what all these other people want, is like change the set dressing, experiment on the on the forms of like, like there are so many games that do stuff competently, and like Naughty Dog. I know I know we've had a checkered pass with them, and especially with how we shot on TLO too. The fun part about Naughty Dog is mostly of like. They take a bunch of ideas from another from other games, and then they polish them to a T, and then they put that in one game. And you're like, okay, that's great. What annoys me more about these AAA games is like, and maybe this is because they're such unwieldy beasts. They're not doing like what the PS2 and PS3 thing was like. You could tell the other developers were playing other developers' games, and they're like, oh, I like what you did there. Let me take that and let me cha change it up and to make it something like. Like, we don't get Dying Light 1 unless we get Mirror's Edge and them being like, yo, if you took this, made it open world, gave us, gave us put some zombies to really sell it in that post-apocalyptic thing, that would be a really cool game. And that was dope. 
And then also you get like Call of Duty looking at Mirror's Edge and being like, yo, what if we took that wall running and made it a bit more aggressive and that's how you get Titanfall and shit like that. I think what to- I think part of it too is the specific types of those games that try to stay close to realism. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, what if we did this but realistic? And I'm like, I find that to be like, yes, it looks good and sometimes it serves a narrative, but I'm like, ultimately you're hurting gameplay. Like I kind of realized this as I was playing Resident Evil 8, where mm-hmm. I was like, the fact that some games don't like, give you the ability to just like make ridiculous shit and run... like, So Resident Evil 8, when you beat the game, you can unlock unlimited ammo for any of your guns. Uh, and you can unlock stuff like um, a super high-powered magnum, a lightsaber, like uh, mm-hmm. oh, a, rocket, okay. a rocket pistol. And running through the game after you've played it with one of those things is insane and it's so much fun and i feel like so many games are so focused on the narrative and um kind of like the the storytelling and whatnot that they're afraid to make it like gameplay (laughs) i mean yeah i think that and also they kind of like i guess the reason i thought of it is that when you have these like kind of survival games there's always like a crafting system and you know there's different there's like rare materials as you go on and you can eventually make better guns and better shit and, and stuff you, like that and you can't pause the game but they never make it like insane weapons like if you're gonna keep jacking up the difficulty of the enemies i want some bullshit weapons like fallout style where give me a laser gun like give me something stupid just to like keep things spicy but i'm just like I'm, Honestly, I'm I'm there for it, but also it would be even more fun of like kind of doing that dead that dead rising thing, of like you have ridiculous weapons, but the story's just like not yes, responding I, at all. So to that's that. the thing. I actually think that's super super important. I think that a lot of people try and go too far to connect the dis or connect the game with like you know the um uh narrative with the, ga- with the gameplay, and I'm just mm-hmm. like. Why can't you just create... Like, if you break it far enough away, then nobody cares anymore. Like, suddenly it's not an issue. Also, there's, like... There's a part of the game where I'm, like... Every once in a while, you'll cheese a mission just because, like... The developer did not have the idea of, like... If you stood in one random fucking corner and just lobbed a grenade, you were able to get through the mission. And I'm like... Who cares, kind of? Because... Like you said, there's too many games trying to channel this realism thing into like these fantasy moments, and I'm like, I don't care. I don't really need that to be like this ultra realistic thing most of the time because I'm like, I don't know. I think it it puts a lot of focus on your story, and if your story is not there, it's just like you're wasting everyone's time. I think that's the problem is that like if I'm not engaged in the story, I have nothing else because you focused so hard on the story that I'm like the rest of the game is like. You can be someone in Mass Effect who likes the choices, or you can be someone in Mass Effect who likes the gameplay, or both. But, like, mm-hmm. there's different aspects that can kind of carry it forward. Um, but you can't, like... There's some games that are just, like, they've got one thing going for it, and if you're not vibing with that thing, you're playing a very average game. Honestly, I think a lot more games need to do the Yakuza thing of just, like... Like, if you play... If you just mainline the story of every Yakuza game... They're telling you a pretty great soap opera with dramatic... <laughs> I was going to say, if you don't mention soap opera, like, because it's dramatic as fuck. <laughs> it is, but to its credit, it always gives you emotional stakes to push you oh, on to sure. the next Oh, for sure. I, I think the stories in all of those games are fantastic. But then they're like, oh yeah, there's also like a an adult dude in a diaper and a side mission. And like, you can go do that and deal with that and have fun with that. But, like, we're still going to be respectful of our story. And too many games, I feel, try to do this. I don't know. I feel like too many developers no, play, I, I, uh, I think... watch South Park, and then they're like, let's let's just be sarcastic the entire game. And it just makes me annoyed. I think you hit the nail on the head. Where I think the Because, be- like I said, Dead, Dead Rising does the same thing. Where... You take the story dead serious, take it at face value, and then the gameplay and everything side story is just absolutely batshit insane. That's what makes truly great great games because you get a little bit of everything. 
Like, if you're invested in the story, keep going with the story. But if you're like, you know, I need a break, let me go deal with this adult man in a diaper. Like, it's just... Or let me teach this, this woman how to be a dominatrix. And I just think it's like... So many games are so afraid to do that. It's very much a, like a West. I don't think there's a Western game that's been able to do that. Um, I mean, maybe actually, Saints no. Row, but Saints Row just like also goes too far in the ridiculous. Like this, the seriousness of the story never gets that serious. Yeah, I think like that's the one. The one thing that really stinks is not having a Western equivalent to Yakuza. Because I'm just like. If you, if you're wrong, I mean, Red Dead Redemption Two for the most part played it very straight, and I was just like, okay, but also that game. My only beef with that game, honestly, is that it goes way too in depth on like trying to make this a simulation with a story that I'm like, why are you telling me this story? Because you've already wrapped up this guy's story in the game I played before this, but like. And also, they don't do the Metal Gear Solid 3 thing of, like, being one of the top 10 games ever made. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they didn't manage to be one of the best games ever, so it's just, you know, <laughs> that's on them. I mean, that is on them. You can't you can't out here being cruel to your uh, your employees and just not change the face of life. Oh, you know? <laughs> yes. I see what you mean. You, you can't... Well, uh, Listen, if, you, if you're going to terrorize your employees and crunch and not managed to make one of the greatest games of all time all time then you know it's, it wasn't worth it oh no no but what i actually meant was more like if you're gonna tell a prequel story oh you gotta, yes, tell, yes. You gotta tell me like a prequel story that makes me re that recontextualizes everything well you also don't believe in prequels um with the one exception of mgs3 it is li like as the days go by like, even I'm watching Star Wars Clone Wars, I'm like, this is okay, but it, my one issue with it is just, like, the more Anakin and Obi-Wan you give me, the less interested I'm in the episodes, but when they don't give me Anakin and Obi-Wan, I'm like, ooh, turn this shit up, turn it all the way up to 11. Because it's just, like, not to say, like, oh, if I know what, how this thing ends, it takes me out. It's mostly of just, like... I start hyper-analyzing what everything means, and I'm like, nah, that's not going to be fun for me or you. So let's just, like, take it easy, tell me a story I don't know. It, that's actually something that's really interesting to me, as we see more and more GTA 6 rumors come out, even though that game's never going to exist. It's just like, if it ever does come out, what the fuck would GTA 6 even be? Uh, yeah, I don't even know at that point. Um... Is this just Fortnite? Oh, hold on. These actually aren't worth that much. Uh, yes, it's just, it's just Fortnite. It's always Fortnite. Always has been. Um, am I at... Oh, uh, hold on. I'm going to give him some of his tampons back. I was just trying to see if I could trigger you with that line, but it, nothing happened. You're not, it's a tampon. It's not that crazy. It's a little crazy that's in this game of all places. I mean, you know they felt like they were... Loki, they, this game has a, the game has is, a little bit of an edgelord vibe The, the game it. is definitely like, what if we did Bojack Horseman, but instead of making uh, uh, interesting characters, we did it with like, Family Guy stock characters. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we could, we could wax poetically on what games we want to see you know, forever. Yeah, let's do Obviously that. Obviously, only we have the good ideas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I was, like, I was... Why won't anyone hire us? <laughs> GTA 6 is just such an interesting... Because I'm thinking... We've had so many open-world games. Because it's the 28th anniversary of GTA 3. Did you say 28th? <laughs> no, 20th. My bad. I mean, it's not. <laughs> but, okay. No, no, it's the 20th anniversary. No, it's not. Of GTA 5? No, GTA 3. Oh... Okay, I thought I'm, I was I was like no no no. It's, no I know worries. the meme is that it's been out for a while, but it hasn't been twenty years. Like, it will no, but be just, eventually, but when it releases on like PS6. But it's interesting to think about like how many open world games we've gotten since GTA 3 that like tried to do GTA things and then they were like, let's not do GTA things. 
and like we've had we've had G- so much GTA 5 so who's gonna buy GTA 5 when it comes out in November what do you mean like at this point when it, when it released on PS5 again yeah or not again cause I'm like you can play GTA 5 with backwards compatibility They'll um they'll tie some like in game items to it in like GTA Online or something. They'd be like, get this exclusive fucking like golden yacht. Only if you buy this version of the game. Or they'll do some would bullshit lo- like that. I would love to interview the people who still play GTA Online. I feel like oh, that's well, one. Oh okay, let's take a t- trip down to the middle school and you know, <laughs> let's not do that. Cut that from the record. <laughs> yeah, not- <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's how well actually Carla- no, because at this point they'd be fucking like in college. Like if they're still playing. Yeah. Nah, if then I want to I want to talk to their parents. What's going on at home? Why you okay oh, need to do this? I have like actual like experience with this. I when I worked at GameStop, <laughs> this is how fucked up it is. Uh, when I worked at GameStop when I was still in high school, I you know, I had to sell Grand Theft Auto 4 to kids and tell their parents like, "Hey, this isn't a kids game." Oh, he just plays it for the driving. I'm like, "No, he doesn't. He plays it to murder people and to run over hookers." And have sex with them. Did you know? You, that would be the thing. It's like I would describe in detail. I'm like, it shows them doing drugs in this. It's like, oh, he can skip those parts. Uh, oh, it shows them murdering people in this. Oh, well, you know, uh, he's. It's nothing he hasn't seen in an action movie. You can sleep with prostitutes in this game. What? My child <laughs> sleeping with prostitutes? No, little Billy, you can't buy this game. <laughs> I would literally read off the back. Of the ERSRB with all the reasons listed, and sexual content would graphic sexual content would be the, at the bottom, and every time I got to that one, they would give their kid like a, such a fucking look. Honestly, it blows. You knew I grew up in a prison. I did. So like, I just... Also, real quick, before we segue away from this. Meanwhile, my I once convinced my parents to buy me Leisure Suit Larry, Magna Cum Loud, because. <laughs> Uh, because I just, or it was my mom, I mixed it in with two other games, and I just said, oh, it's just a game about college. And she's like, all right. And I was like, that was the end of it. Like, like even after the person, like, read it off. And I was like, nah, there's not. they can't put anything in a video game. That game has nudity and sex scenes. No. Yeah, it does. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, no, no, no. I don't allow it. I don't. What do you? I don't know what you're not allowing. What the? That was on the GameCube. Yeah, it was on the PS2 as well. We live in a society. There was an uncensored version on PC. I know that. Excuse me. They they would have this. They would have this like comically like big censor bar over like the graphic bits while still having a sex scene. Um, Oh, healthy. And. I guess the PC version removes that. I just... I don't ever want to be that criminally horny that I'm out here. (laughs) Well, to be... Hold on. Hold on. To be fair, I was like 13, okay? No, no, no. Not you. Not you. That is the height of criminal horniness. No, at 13, you can't... Nah. What you did, understandable. (laughs) <laughs> it's the developers of the game of saying this is acceptable. This needs to exist. Like, nah, that's Pandora's box. I feel like that's where all the horny tweets came from. It's from people who played Leisure Suit Larry <laughs> at a very young age. They're like, I need to be this horny all the time. I don't know. I kind of think it's an untapped market. Like, do you think there's a porn game out there that oh. actually has a rich story and is actually has a fun gameplay loop? Like it has yeah, to exist, I, right? Well, I mean, so because th- think okay. of it, think of it like um, like people who do like camera work on porn, uh, like pornographic videos, where it's like they use that and then they use that on their resume. Like, look at I shot really well. I had a lot of experience here, and they go and do like actual work. Like, do you think there's a similar thing with porn games? I mean, where where they're like, yeah, I worked on Leisure Suit Larry for a couple of years. Uh, and I designed the mini game where you play quarters until the the girl gets drunk and goes and sleep with you. And it's like, oh, interesting. Like, do you think there's anything like that? Like, I mean, there probably is, but I also think there's a so like to pump the brakes a little bit. I think there like not to say like oh art can't be horny because I do know that there's like <laughs> there's art that here comes old man Carlos. Games. 
Netflix. There's video games that like actually like uh, more indie development oh, studios serious. who are like, nah, I'm making a uh, sex video game because I want to challenge our assumptions about sexuality and shit like that. I'm like, that's cool and dope. Leisure Suit Larry doesn't want to do any of that. Why but, can't? But why can't they be like Yoko Taro and be like, yeah, I'm gonna make a phenomenal masterpiece. But also, I like girls with big titties and big asses. All right, you can balance these <laughs> two feelings inside of you. But I. I mean, you're you're not wrong, but I also think I don't know. Maybe I came I came across too too quick, and I did not actually think my stance through. You know, I would never do that. No, of course not. <laughs> okay, there, yeah, Carlos is okay with the horny video game. Carlos is not okay. <laughs> wow, Carlos is... all the things Carlos has changed his mind on. This car, this is what he's like. You know what? On reflection, like... I mean, but there's also a part of me that like not to say like oh we need to save the children. It's mostly, like, with Leisure Shoot, like, what you just told me about right there, like, playing the quarters game to get a girl drunk enough to have sex with you, problematic. But, and not to say, like, every game should be, like, an after-school special telling you, like, this is moral behavior and whatnot, but I do think there's an interesting way of maybe structuring games to be a bit more educational and moralistic to help kids just understand, like, hey... This is consent. This is what's okay. This is what's not okay. But again, we're not going to do that. That's a lot to do. If you're 13 and horny, you're going to be 13 and horny. This is the thing I'll say about Leisure Suit Larry. Um, All the girls in in that game, real fucking horny, which is a lot better than like coercing people who aren't into it into something where they're like, you know, if they're like interested and they're convinced to be interested, that's different than just like, you know, Someone straight up being like, I don't want to do this. And you being like, well, I'm the man. So, like, yeah, that real problematic shit. How the fuck are you playing this mini game? What do you mean? Like, uh, does he move it for you? And yeah, you just got to hit the button? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, Judgment has a mini game like this. Fuck me. Um, and also, I think the original, not Skyrim, uh, Oblivion had this mini game for their lock picking. Fuck me. <laughs> It, the speed just, it's like, it pulls it back so much faster than it goes. It's like, the speed is so inconsistent. This is like that fucking uh, fish minigame in Jack 1. No, I can do that minigame. Um, the the one, I mean like one the- pound fishies, five pound fishies. If you get a lurker, I'll spoil a whole lot of them. Yeah, I've played that part a lot. Want to hear some bullshit? Done. Oh, Speaking of trophies, um, the... Uh, the Vita version of that game, it changed... Tr- there was one trophy in each of the Vita Jack games that it changed. Where... So, like, for the fishing minigame, instead of beating the fish minigame, like, normally, just like, hey, you know, you get the trophy for doing it. You had to beat it... With touchscreen controls. Yo. Can you imagine doing that minigame with a touchscreen? Maybe Naughty Dog needs to let its employees go home. <laughs> Well, to be, fair, to, that, that, to be fair, that was done by mass media. Um, okay. But uh, there was another one on Jack 2. I can't... I, oh, it was... um. Do you remember in Jack 1 where you have to... Sh- in the swamp section, you have to do, like, the first person shooting the rats to defend, like, the fucking yeah. food? That also had to be in first person. <laughs> because okay, there's no God. Media. Maybe, you yeah. need, maybe you need to go home, too. <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah. They would have already attacked you. Trust me. The uh the gameplay here is not very good. I, yeah, I literally has not kept me interested at all. There's a like looting mechanic, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the loot that I get. Cuz like I haven't done anything with it. I sure hope so. But you know what? I think I see some good stuff in there. So I'm going in and <sighs> Um, oh, yeah, there's a lot down here. Okay, I guess. Whatever. Anything else that happened in the world? Yeah, so about... Nope, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> we did this joke already. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's? Oh, I heard Biomutants tanking reviews. I mean, from what it looks like, because it's a, a game developed by 20 people. I don't think I've even seen the gameplay. It. Some people are like, it's kind of, it's got that Rage Two vibe that I complained about before. Of like, 
the the fighting gameplay is good, but then they decided to make it open world and then stretch it between like you just it just looks like a boring open world game. Yeah, I'm not about that. Um, so the can't wait till it comes on PS Plus. The like one person whose uh, streams I follow, um, uh, Reina Vez Junior. He started streaming Biomutant today, stopped after like two hours, and then refunded it. And that is the first time I've ever heard him get a game refunded. God, so that's a real... Like, there is definitely a statement of like, I don't feel like playing this anymore versus I'm refunding this. Like, that is... That's like hatefully saying something about it. That bums me out, because I was kind of looking, looking into it, but I guess I'm just going to sit on my hands until Ratchet and Clank comes out. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm basically going through my backlog at the moment. I do want to beat Judgment because the sequel comes out later this year. Oh, yeah, I was going to actually... Um, Yakuza 2, that's actually what I'm going to play. But, uh, I'll, say this. Stuck... I'll say this about uh, about Judgment, if you wanted to get in on like the new version of the game. Because basically... Mm -hmm. um, if you have a basic familiar familiarity with Kamurocho and with kind of like the world of Yakuza, that's all you need. Like it, You don't have to like know the plot of the future games. You mm -hmm. just have to know Kamarocho. You can you can okay. ju you can just jump jump into Judgment a little bit earlier. The reason I recommend it is that I'm playing the PS5 version, and dude, it looks fantastic and it plays so well. <laughs> like 60 FPS yeah, Yakuza I, I, is insane. I was actually about to buy it because I was like, it's only, oh, 40, it's only bucks 40 bucks too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's yeah. Maybe I'll just do that. Um. This is our second time. Oh shit! The voice of Sebastian died. Sebastian. From okay. Little Mermaid, Samuel oh. Wright. That's seventy-four. Are you fucking crazy? It's a coyote zombie. All right, let's get on the Yu-Gi-Oh thing. <laughs> Don't, can't do that. He was how old? Seventy-four. Yes. Seventy-four. Actually, light speed measures distance. Actually, light speed measures distance. Imagine how annoying it would be if, like, <laughs> to be left somewhere during the apocalypse. I'm just like, all right, just hang tight here. And I'm like, yo, 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 no weapons, no nothing. Go if you decided to go. Okay, okay, sorry. Where are we gonna find help? Let's go back to the camp. You know, it was inevitable that we would come across a game that is just trash. Like, <laughs> we were playing real fast and loose with uh, these Rattalaka games. We got lucky with two of them, where a football game was a weird, like, trip. And One Night Stand actually was a pretty good game. Like, a pretty interesting, like, gameplay loop. And that wasn't as problematic as I thought it was going to be. It was not problematic. Honestly, I like our uh, Carlson and Nick go into the PS now and try to see what the fuck is on there. <laughs> What do you mean, racist? Hi there. Are you guys animal eaters? What? No. Why would you assume? Oh, okay, good. I ran into some animal eaters a week ago. <sighs> I don't want to keep playing this. How long have we been going? Nah, just regular. We've been going for okay. Uh, we can right. we can wrap this up after I get my next trophy. How about that? Just so I have a nice life to leave off. Yes, it. It's pretty close. It is. This is really like one of those things where it's like uh, someone watched South Park, and they were like, "I can do that." Yeah, sure. And then they were, Honestly, turned out they couldn't. <laughs> like, what do you want? I feel like we have a proposition. South Park is like Drake to me. Of like, I can't understand the appeal because every once in a while, a South Park joke will hit, and I'm like, "Ah, that's really funny." I, like, I can, I understand the appeal for most people. And there's a couple of Drake songs that I'm like, you know what, that's a good song. I'm not even going to front. But it's the thing I hate more are the people who are trying to copy that 
that. Yeah. And then, like, just doing it ten times worse. I'm just like, you are... Like, Drake opened the door for a lot of people who I don't like to start telling me about their feelings over Bates. And South Park allowed this to exist. Not to say that this is worthless. This is mostly just like, haha, let's just make rude jokes and shit. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. Just pick up something heavy to put on the basement door. I mean, at least it's less, like, offensive. Some old furniture. That'll do. Bro, can you pick it up? Yeah. What should I take? Just pick up a cabinet. Big one or small one? I can't big. wait. Nah, we don't need a big one. I can't oh, wait. Oh fuck! To go I back. forgot about near it's replicant. I gotta get on that. Side. Yeah, I gotta go back to that. I I'm basically so there's a halfway point. Um, and I'm trying to get all the side quests I can do done before I get to that halfway point. There's only a, there's only a trophy for getting uh, thirty side quests done, but there's a bunch of weapon ones that you need materials from. But also, like, I just want to do them. Uh, there was a, uh, I will say this about near replicants um, side quest stuff. It felt like, especially in the beginning, every single side quest gave you like something interesting. Like, it, okay. like it either unlocked a game mechanic or it like uh, gave you like a kind of rare item. Like they all felt worth doing. It wasn't just like. No here. reason. Oh, well, crap. What's going on? Well, we well, should start a petition crap. to make another Deus Ex. Square <laughs> I'm sure it exists. Maybe there, yeah, there's gotta be. Escape? I just want them to put a different team on Avengers, and just give us fucking Deus Ex back. Or just like make Going Avengers would have been. I can see how Avengers would have been better if they were just like, here's just a fucking Kamala Khan single player game where we just focus on that um, and interaction. With the no, I won't. I wouldn't say that. I, I, having beaten Avengers, um, it's actually pretty good, and all of the characters feel fun to play as. I think the biggest thing is that it. Uh, it I think it was maybe the hardest hit game by the pandemic. Mm. Except maybe Cyberpunk. <laughs> no, I don't think the pandemic really impacted Cyberpunk. I think Cyberpunk impacted Cyberpunk. Yeah. But also, I think the thing with Cyberpunk, it's a lot of people who are convinced. Like everyone, this happens every couple of years of people deciding. This is the end of all time game. Yeah, like, where people just like hype themselves up. To the point of no return of like, once you've worked with yourself that this is going to be your forever game, like, you'll, you can never be happy. Sorry, real quick, I'm responding to my girlfriend. Oh, no worries. Carl. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pussy Ever over here. Mr. I have sex a lot over here. Yeah, sorry, I can't listen to your story. Dude, is he having sex? <laughs> I was so happy that I was able to share that video with you. <laughs> it, it's a great video. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, I watch all of his content, and for him to finally have one that like has the potential to go viral, I'm so happy. Uh, <laughs> nobody's going to know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> no, not at all. Do you want to explain the video that we that you shared today that you didn't watch before you shared it? Uh, oh, <laughs> I was actually going to ask Juliana about it. <laughs> but um, today I commented if for all, all all of you guys who follow me on Twitter, I know you guys literally have all, push notifications. All three of them, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I saw a tweet today about, like, this guy asking this... These three women. He was just. He turned to one girl. And was like, "Oh, you got a boyfriend?" She's like, "Yes." And he goes, "Do you want to do a loyalty check?" And she goes, "Sure." He then turns to the two girls and go, "Give her boyfriend a call and ask him if he they want to if he wants to hang out with the two of you, just the two of you." I didn't. I didn't even watch the whole video because you know Cross got attention span of a gold goldfish. It's like a minute long video. <laughs> I scroll down and I see someone going like, "Why would?" Your boyfriend's number even be in your, your yeah. So th like, this is the thing. Phone. It's like they're like okay, and they start dialing or they start like dialing. It's like wait a minute, you had that number? <laughs> like, I mean, it's not that crazy. It's not that honestly, crazy, but it is funny in this context. <laughs> like, 
I mean, my response was like, y'all don't want boyfriends. Y'all want hostages. Like, that's what that sounds like to me. That's a cry for help. But like. Which I told, I said to Carlos, this was like the gone home of tweets to him. Where because he didn't finish the video, he took a completely different message than what was intended. Because then I went, I went back and I watched the video. No, no, I, t- I was geeking at this video when you sent it to me. And then I was explaining parts of the video, and you were like, what? <laughs> and you were like, I didn't watch the whole thing. And I was like, it's a minute long. <laughs> but I was like, and then and then you went back and finished it. And this dude, this idiot dude. Play, they're, again, play, the, play, the, play the conversation that they started. <laughs> Not play it, but just like tell them what, what they said. The two of them are like, oh, we need a ride. Can you come pick us up? And he's, he's, like, he's uh, like, can't you take an Uber? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was like, oh, homie's, homie's going to come through. First place the Uber, and they're just like, oh, no, uh, we don't want to take an Uber. How about you pick us up, and we can just, like, hang out afterwards. And he's just like, uh, and then he's, he says, don't tell my girlfriend. No, 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 he, sa- like, he, sa- yeah. he says, uh, okay. And then they go, you just, like, can't tell whatever her name is about it. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. And I was like, what? <laughs> no. My man's about to risk it all. And then the girlfriend gets mad at the so two of them. Yeah, and then the girlfriend turns and goes like, I can't believe you just did that. I can't believe you would just go behind my back like that. And like, what? <laughs> and then the guy who like is like doing the thing, he's like, he's like what? <laughs> and she's like, I just like, I thought I could trust you two. And they're like, it's fake. And the guy's like, I just asked them in front of you. To do it, you you approved of this. Like, oh, I didn't think it was gonna uh, go this way. I just didn't think they would just like stab me in the back like that. And they're like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> like, I mean, it, it was just like from the situation to her reaction. I was just like, "How how are you gonna react like that?" And you t- to the credit said that she might have just been like protecting herself. I mean, but this is the thing I'm saying. You dumbass gets caught up in like this. And as someone who likes to overreact and be ridiculous often, I understand that sometimes rather than processing your emotions like an adult and dealing with them, because all really the, the two methods I saw for her out of this with at least a little self-confidence was you thank your friends and then you start, you say like, you throw a hissy fit like, I'm going to break up with him. Or you blame everyone else for your problems. And she did the Carlos method. I'm just, I'm going to blame everyone else for my problems. Because honestly, is she just going to cry on camera? Are they going to catch her on crying on camera? Nah, she I, just started. I took it a different way where I was like, she's a dangerous mix of either drunk or, or stupid or both. Because she full on in the moment was just like, I cannot believe my two best friends would betray me like that. And I'm like, they didn't betray you. In fact, they pointed out that he was a cheater to you. And like, and then the guy who was like hosting was like, "What is happening right now?" Like, I, don't... I mean, it's honestly like that's that's that internalized misogyny. You don't need a man that bad. If if any of y'all people are in a relationship and your man's cheating on you and you know about this, you don't need that man that bad or a woman that bad. If that's or whatever. Unless you're it into is. it. Unless you know you're into cuckolding or you're into open relationship. Do it do you, but don't settle for that. Yeah, like nah. If you you gotta be respected throughout any relationship you're in. I think that brings us to a natural closure. Yeah, so that was <laughs> scheming through the zombie apocalypse. Thank you for bringing that up a lot. My girlfriend's having a rough day speaking of relationships, so I was, I was trying to make sure I could uh, message her. I appreciate you, you vamping. Should, you should get on that loyalty check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know something something I like to fuck with because Juliana never saves my office number and so I'll just randomly call her and she doesn't pick up on my voice for some reason. This way I'm in the bedroom <laughs> on the other side of the apartment. I just like, yo, is your frig- refrigerator running? And she was like, what? I, I, I have a story. <laughs> what? I can't believe you just brought up this memory. So... This is gonna. I don't. I don't know if I should say this. So, when I was in elementary school, I knew two phone numbers. It was my home phone number, uh, which started with five four five. I'm not gonna go through it now, uh, but I knew my home phone number, 
and I knew the phone number for an ice cream place beginning with a W for Carlos that I had never been to, but I knew the phone number for some reason. <laughs> um, it was in the North. I'm just going to try and oh. if you can okay. figure out from that. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and so I called them and I don't know, I must've picked it up either from like a show or something. And I just called them. and was like, uh, hi, is your refrigerator running? And then like this, like, <laughs> like high school girl or whatever is like, uh, yeah, let me check. Yeah, it is. And I was like, then you better go and catch it. And then I hung up. And then <laughs> I did this on the, on the phone to my parents' room. And then I got in their bed and just started like in the fetal position, like rocking back and forth because I was like, they're going to call the cops on me. I'm going to go to jail now. <laughs> I, was just, I, was just like, I like didn't believe that she actually fell for it because I had no, pre- I wasn't prepared. I fully expected her just to go like, what are you trying to do? And then just like hang up. I didn't think she would actually respond with, yeah. And I was like, and I just like, I must have been like six years old. I was just like, I'm going to jail now. That is, that is perfect. Uh, and <laughs> you'd appreciate that. Um, I, it's, I think it's funnier knowing that I'd never been there. Like I just, I'd been, that was we have like, five ice cream shops in our hometown and that I'd never been in that one. I had preferred a different one. Like I actually don't think I've ever been in it either. I've only gone to the one that starts with the D. Yeah. That your sister worked at. Um, no, my, my sister never worked there. Didn't she? No, my sister only worked at Duncan, but I thought she always liked going for that D. Huh? Uh, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. And I, I think you. with that, we've come to a natural close of our video. So. No one likes you. I ended it on such a positive <laughs> note. And you're like, nah, let's go full negative again. To be fair, the one you're talking about is my favorite too. So I get it. Um, all right, everyone. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to try and hopefully get a better one next time. This was a uh, trash and I'm not looking forward to finishing it for the platinum. But uh, there's, I've like seen a bunch of like reviews because this is only a part one, by the way. Like, apparently this game ends in a cliffhanger. And there's a lot of people who are like, when are they going to bring part two over? And I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> so, so <laughs> I, this is really mean. Uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. Someone wrote, it's like if BoJack Horseman was, <laughs> was written by an incel. <laughs> and I'm just like. <laughs> That's not wrong. It's so appropriate. All right. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.